In this video, we're going to continue the conversation about how to write a standard function, but this time we're going to write it in product of some form. And as we did before, we're going to use a the simplest uh, uh, example we can come up with where it's got enough detail so we can use it to introduce the various definitions and the concepts we need for this process. So, so our focus is to figure out how to write standard product of sum uh, function. So let's say we are being asked to write a function. We are being asked to write a function that is true when more than one input variable, more than one input variable is true. Okay, so that's our job. As always, one of the first thing we need to do is try to see if we can take this information and turn it into a truth table. And before we do that, we want to make sure that um, we are doing the system diagram. It, this didn't define how many variables we have. Just because we, we're trying to uh, use the simplest example, we can come up that has enough complexity to, to be able to demonstrate all the definitions. We're going to use variables, three variables. We're going to use three input variables, x, y, and z. So these are the inputs coming in, and we just have simply one output coming out, which is x, y, and z. Okay. So that's our system diagram. I suppose we can call it a larger than one counter or something, whatever name you want to do, give it. So this is our system diagram. Then now that we know how many inputs and how many outputs we have, the next step is to do a truth table. So our truth table will have the inputs x, y, and z. It's going to be 0, 0, 0, so much like we've always done. We're going to write this, all the possible variable, uh, possible uh, binary values in sequence. There we go. And then we're going to have a function. We're going to write the function, see what are the, this, this function's value is going to be x and y and z. Okay. Since it says it has to be true when we have more than one input, more than one value of input. So um, like if you have two ones in the input or three ones in the input, then we should be a one. So if you look at this one, it says that, okay, there is no input, there's no one in our input. So we call that zero. There's only one that's still zero. There's only one, zero. Now we have two ones, so the function is going to be a one, zero, one, one, and one. Great. So, so we have our functions figured out now. Now the next question is what is this, uh, how do we go forward to write uh, the product of sum. Before we get there, we need to define something else. And that something else is what we call a standard form uh, or a standard sum term. As you can see, sum is used as to, to, to talk about uh, um, uh, ORs. So this, this sum term basically says, and, and it's, it's reverse of what we did with sum of products. In this case, what we want to do is we want to figure out what is the term that is zero when you're on this row. And so, for example, if I write this as x or y, or z. Notice what's happening here. If, if, if I write it this way, 
um, you will see that the only row, the only row in the table where this is zero is zero, when x is zero, y is zero, z is zero. If x is, if, if z is one, this is no longer zero. For every other row except this row, this term is zero. That's why a lot of the time they refer to this also as max term. So, so now the question is, what terms makes 0, 0, 1, uh, 0? So if I write a max term, I'm going to use the new term we learned, max term x or y or z naught, then that will ensure that when this row is true, when x is 0, y is 0, and z is 1, this is 0. Now let's go ahead and do this. So, so notice what is happening. Every time I have a zero, this variable is uncomplemented. Every time I have a one, it's complemented. So let's go ahead and follow that with the two. The two, the term corresponding to the second row, uh, second, a third row in this case, would be x or y naught or z. And we can kind of follow this process and write the rest of them. And you can test to make sure that that's still true where this um, term is only zero for this row and it's one everywhere else. And again, that's the reason they call it max term because it is the largest group of rows we can define as one without saying the whole table is equal to one. And again, zero, one, one would be x or y naught or z naught and then x naught or y or z and then the next one will be a one zero one zero would be x naught or y or z naught one one zero will be x naught or y naught or z and then Last one is x naught or y naught or z. And much like we've done before, we can use a shorthand to refer to each one of these max terms. We literally call this max term M. And notice this capital letter because it's max. In the other case, we had min terms. We wrote it with small m. So capital M0, M1, for third row, M2, M3, M4, and M5, M6, and M7. So we have the max term designators here, um, and now we're gonna try to write the functions. What we're gonna do in this case, uh, as opposed to the previous method we had, in this particular case, we're gonna focus and only write the, the these variables that force that particular row to be zero. So when I'm trying to write the function, function x, y, and z using, um, using product of sums, this is the standard form of products of sum, what I'm gonna do is I I'm going to use a red color so it's a little easier to show it. I'm just going to write this row because it's zero. Then I'm going to write this zero. Then I'm going to write this zero. And then this zero. Okay. So if I go ahead and write these, you will see that this function would be x or y or z. That is the sum, product. Now we got a, is a product of sum. We wrote the sum, now we have gotta do the product. And the next one is x or y or z naught for m1. And then the next one is m2. The next one is m4. And that's the last zero. We are done. 
So what we are doing in this case, if you look at it, only in this row, the, the row zero, row one, row two, and row four, we force the function to zero. Everywhere else is a one. So this is this is how we write product of sum. This is the standard form of writing it. Much like we had in the previous case, this function could be written as um, basically m zero ended with m one ended with m two ended with m four. And that's one way of writing it. Then we refer to this as a compact max term product. Only we don't even have to say product of term because once we say max term is known that this is a product of the four. Okay. Now much like we had before in the other case was sum of products so we started with the sum in this case is a product is a sum of, i'm sorry a product of sum so we use the pi which is a product signal and then max term zero one two and four and that is referred to as the explicit compact max term four. Okay, so just add a word explicit to it. And then much like we had in the, you see a lot of parallel between this and there, since we use a product, we know we really don't need to put the capital M in there. So this is the one that we use most commonly. And this is called the implicit compact max term and this is probably this is the most common one we are using now if you think about this for a while you'll notice that there is a relationship here um, where 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 we can literally um, this uh, product of sum <coughs> excuse me product of sum is a De Morgan's use the De Morgan's theorem to get some of products and there's that relationship that exists between these two and the other one and this is something for you to explore that if 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 my functions can be written if a function can be written as product of zero one max term and four max max term that is equal because these are 0, 1, 2, and 4 are talking about the rows that are 0. This function can be also written as, as a sum of all the numbers that are missing here from 0 to 7. So 0, 1, 2 is here, 3 is not here, 4 is here, 5, 6, and 7 is on there. So my claim is these are equal. It's a good exercise for you to verify that these are indeed equal. By the way, if not, all I have to do to find if not is for the product, write the 3, 5, 6, and 7. And for sum, would be 0, 1, 2, and 4. So there are some relationships here you want to explore with yourself and make sure um, you understand them well. Okay. So that brings us to the end of examples for, um, in this particular case, would be product of sum and the fact that we have standard form, we have the uh, compact form, we have the explicit max term form, and we have the implicit max term form. The key here is, unlike the sum of products, most of us are used to write sum of product it comes naturally because you're looking at ones and if the variable is zero it's a not and all that but in this particular case for the product of some case you are looking whenever the variable's value is zero it's uncomplemented when it's one it's complemented and when you go to write the function you look for zeros not ones okay 
So that brings us to the end of this particular uh, video.